Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. I hope everyone can hear me and see me all right. I'm Sean. I help to run the operation and the auctions here at Prop Stores offices in the UK. I'm sure you've heard we have got a two-day auction coming up on the 1st and 2nd of December. We've got over 900 lots from more than 350 different titles. You can bid online, by phone or by absentee. You can sign up and get more information from propstore.com forward slash live auction. Sadly, due to the pandemic, we can't have our usual exciting auction and exhibition in central London, but we're going to do our very best to get you up close and personal with as much of the incredible content in this year's auction. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, I would like to start with this fedora here, and hopefully you'll all recognise that this is the Joker's fedora, played by Jack Nicholson. So, after Jack Napier falls into a pretty nasty vat of chemicals in the Axis factory, uh, he emerges and reinvents himself as the maniacal Joker. Uh, this is made by a New York hat maker, Dobbs, and on the inside of it is actually some residue white makeup marks, which are from when Jack Nicholson was wearing it on set, and there was a lot of transfer, I'm assuming, due to the uh, intense heat under the lights at Pinewood Studios. Uh, it was designed by Bob Ringwood, who is was actually nominated for an Oscar for this film um, and he was in discussions with Jack Nicholson uh, about the design of the Joker and when deciding upon uh, which exact purple to go for uh, Jack Nicholson decided that LA Lakers which were his favourite team uh, would be the perfect colour so here we have a bright purple fedora and that's estimated at 20 to 30 thousand pounds uh, next up, we have a hand-drawn costume design, uh, again by Bob Ringwood. This one's from uh, Batman Returns. We can see the Penguin's typical top hat, monocle and umbrella. Now, this is actually executed in acrylic paint uh, with some pen highlights, and it's been uh, quite, deep, neat, quite neatly cut out and stuck to this uh, mount board here. Now, that's estimated at four to six thousand pounds. Next up, we have the titular character of uh, Batman, Michael Keaton. Again, uh, drawn by Bob Ringwood. Now this one differs slightly to Penguin because he's uh, cut out um, quite a lot of details to form uh, Batman's armour. And it's all been highlighted uh, in black pen, sort of marker and, and fine pen. And I'm sure some of you will be quite excited to see the signature that we've got down here at the bottom, which is that of Bob Kane, the creator of Batman. And it reads, for my friend, Bob Ringwood, Batman's wonderful wardrobe designer, Bats wishes Bob Kane, 91. Now, it's signed in 91 because he actually travelled to the set of uh, Batman Returns, which was filmed in 1991, uh, saw this hanging up and decided to sign it, which is an absolutely lovely addition to uh, the design. And this one's a little bit more than Penguin, just because of the um, signature, and of course it is of Batman. And that one's at six to eight thousand pounds. Uh, sticking with Batman, we're going to head across to a production-made cowl that we have here. And this was specifically made for Michael Keaton and is made out of uh, black rubber. Now, as I'm sure some of you know that they make multiples of things for films just in case something gets damaged, they need to do a quick change, uh, they spill their lunch on it, that sort of thing. Um, and so this is one of the ones that was made um, but wasn't quite finished uh, for use during filming uh, but was made during the production. Uh, this one is estimated at eight to ten thousand pounds. Now, my favourite thing in here is this uh, continuity binder here, which was Bob Ringwood's personal binder for when he was on set to note down, detail and anticipate every possible um, need for costumes, the action that was performed. And it really is a really comprehensive insight um, into the amount of detail that just this one department goes into just to do filming. We've got 277 Polaroids in here. Um, Polaroids were obviously really quick photos to take. You don't want to be waiting 24, 48 hours to get a printout. And obviously, don't think about it so much now, but it was, of course, a pre-digital age. So I want to highlight this particular page. Um, it tickles me somewhat because we've got Batman with his arms out and it's had to be taken um, at a 45 degree angle just to fit him all in. 
Um, you can see we've also got some script pages and on the scene breakdown page we've got the actor's name, the character, a bit of description about the costume, uh, the scenes, any expected actions, so if they thought they were going to be uh, running around, um, having fights or simply just sitting down doing nothing. And there's a really detailed um, breakdown of things like shirts, scarves, shoes, um, braces, waistcoats, jackets, uh, anything and everything that was involved in the costume for that particular costume in that particular moment is recorded for everyone to refer back to. Um, if they filmed it one day, had to do go, back, go back and do a reshoot, we want to make sure that uh, the back cowl is positioned in just the right way. <laughs> um, uh, my other favourite page, which is somewhat of a spoiler alert, um, is for the Joker's death after he's fallen off the uh, top of the cathedral. So we've got uh, Jack Nicholson actually lying down <laughs> in the rubble and then at the bottom uh, rather chipper looking Jack Nicholson uh, in all of his uh, bloody gory makeup. Now this is a rather mammoth tome and I'm sure you can appreciate there's an awful lot of detail in there. So we do really do recommend going online and checking out all the information on there but if you wanted to arrange maybe a one-to-one -one call with a number of our specialists we can arrange that um just have to drop us an email at auction dot uh, auction at propsor dot com uh, this incredible piece is estimated at 10 to fifteen thousand. Uh, sticking with the costumes, we've got Michelle Pfeiffer, Catwoman's boots from Batman Returns. Those again, designed by the incredible Bob. Uh, these are leather, they're, they're knee-high stilettos with um, some lovely lacing up the front. Uh, there's a little bit of paint transfer on them as well, uh, probably from use during production. And I'm sure you can tell that they're standing up uh, beautifully straight, and that's due to a custom mannequin that's um, been placed inside that allows them to stand up quite freely. Um, they're estimated at six to eight thousand. Uh, another of my favourites, um, which I'm sure you remember, is the helicopter from the end of the first Batman film. And they made two different scales of the helicopter. Uh, this one was used for the exterior flying shots. Um, Jack Nicholson wouldn't have fit inside there. Um, and forgive me if I um, say this wrong, but it's based on an Aero Spatiale SA341 Gazelle uh, for any helicopter enthusiasts out there. Uh, it's made of plastic uh, with some wooden rotors, uh, painted gorgeous lime green uh, with a lot of kind of intentional distressing to make it look a little bit more beaten up uh, with a maniacal joker. Uh, decals on each side and what's even better about this particular piece is that it comes with a certificate of authenticity for the brothers themselves and this one is estimated at eight to twelve thousand uh, I'd like to move over to this side for to take a look at a lot, well, three different lots actually, of Gotham Globe newspapers from Batman Returns. So these were all custom made and custom printed for the film. Um, they've got different titles like Penguin, Man or Myths or Something Worse, yeah. Batman Blows It and Penguin Forgives Parents. Um, the papers are seen numerous times throughout the film. Um, and are really, really nice keepsakes um, and also fantastic for displaying as well because you know exactly what it is. Um, and these are um, three separate lots, each, each estimated at 800 to 1200. Um, my personal favourite Batman film, please don't judge me, is Batman Forever. Um, and I'd like to move over uh, to Two Faces Coin. Now, uh, I, I know I'm quite short, but this is an oversized coin um, and it was made specially for scenes of it being flipped up in the air. So it's made of cast metal, so it's nice and weighty as well. Um, and it's nice and detailed on one side with the words E Gothamus Unum uh, and obviously heavily mutilated on the other side, which is how Two-Face uh, distinguished between heads and tails. This great little piece is estimated at 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. Moving on to some more modern Batman films, uh, we've got a few pieces from the Joker uh, in The Dark Knight. Um, this is Joker's necktie uh, from The Dark Knight. Uh, it was actually designed by Lindy Hemming, who took inspiration from things like Vivian Westwood, Francis Bacon, Iggy Pop, uh, even Johnny Depp is cited as some inspiration for this one as well. Um, Heath Ledger worked um, quite closely with Lindy to come up with the Joker style and he suggested quite the distinctive narrow 60s thin style um, 
tie. And they approached the tailors Turnbull and Asser um, to come up with um, something unique for the Joker. And this is actually um, a specially um, designed pattern uh, exclusively for the Joker. And what is fantastic about this piece is he literally wore it on the scene, took it off, popped it over his head, and that is e the exact screen worn knot um, that was used during filming. Uh, he gave this to his personal assistant, um, and it's estimated at eight to 12,000. Uh, up next, again sticking with uh, Heath Ledger's Joker, we've got a scorched Joker card, not just a playing card, it's actually a Joker card. I'm sure everyone remembers the scene at Battersea Power Station where it was filmed, where he's setting fire to all of the gangster's money. Um, Heath actually kind of picked this up after filming, signed it and gave it straight to a crew member, um, unfortunately, as he passed away before film. Uh, the film was released. Um, this is actually one of the very few items that are signed by Heath, um, and that's estimated at two to three thousand. Uh, the final piece that I'd like to look at today um, is again another piece of Heath Ledger's, which is his production script. So he was issued with this. Uh, it's watermarked with his name, and it's even got his name down at the bottom just to make sure that uh, everyone knew it was his. And uh, there's 300 and, uh, sorry, 135 uh, pink pages in there, which was to do uh, the colours are to do with uh, reprints, um, so they know uh, on which date it was issued, and they can chop and change them um, as and when um, different scenes are revised. Also included is a wrap party gift token, uh, a, a wrap party token, um, which allowed them to gain entry to the wrap party, which was held after they wrapped filming. And it's a cool little casino chip with the iconic Batman silhouette. And these were gifted um, to Heath Ledger's personal assistant, um, and they're estimated at eight to twelve thousand pounds. Tim, do we have any questions? Yes. Uh, I believe there were two different scales. Oh, uh, Remy, uh, yes, thank you. You have asked me if there were um, more than t uh, more than was it more than two helicopters? Oh, how many were made? Um, I believe this is the um, only one of the scale. There were two scales made. Obviously, one that was um, huge for people to sit in, and then a smaller one for the uh, distance shots. Thank you, Anthony, on Facebook. Uh, for the past 30 years, uh, some of this has been with uh, crew members. Um, it's been in private collection. And we're kind of now giving it a chance to go to uh, a new home. Any more? Okay, perfect. Well, if that's it, I would like to thank you very much for keeping me company. Our next live event will be on the 11th of November, hosted by our very own Stephen Lane, who's going to be chatting about the swords and weapons that we've got. Don't forget that you can register at propstore.com forward slash live auction. You can also arrange a one-to-one -one Zoom call with one of our specialists, because I know we do have an awful lot of stuff in the auction, so if you've got any questions or want to see anything um, up close, uh, just discuss it in detail you can do that uh, any questions as well just send them through to auction at propstore.com or you can contact us through any of our social media feeds thanks again for joining us this is prop store signing off <laughs>